How's it going, NYCFC fans? Back at it for another episode here with the Fireside Gang, Alex and Juan. Obviously not the result we wanted yesterday, 2-0 defeat to, to Nashville in the opener. And obviously there's a lot to discuss, breaking down, kind of went wrong. Uh, what NYCFC has to do now? You know, wh where do we look here? The team did not look good. There was some signs of optimism and hope, and I want to discuss some individual performances that were, you know, solid. You know, for the most part, we saw some uh, flair. We saw some excitement, some things to be happy about, but most of everything was quite negative. And ultimately, you look at the statistics, we'll break it down for you, take a look at kind of where NYCFC had some success, where they faltered, and what they need to do moving forward. They, they clearly just need more talent and they need more time together because they don't look like they have much chemistry, um, which kind of happens when you have most of your best players leave. You're trying to supplement it with backups, reserves. You don't really fill everybody in all those spots, those vacancies with high-end talent. Um, so now we're trying to pick up the pieces. There's obviously a lot of you know discombobulation going on in the midfield and the offense a lot of individual attempts and not a lot of you know sequences that look like a team so you can't rely on individuals to carry teams you know what i mean you need a team effort you need the passing to be strong efficient you have to have that chemistry and they just did not seem like they had that one uh but when you're looking at this give me your take you know some things that you saw that we need to improve upon maybe some individual players that you thought played well well in terms of individual performances i think Kufra did well in the la I think he had like two or three plays where he was able to actually go in the attack. And I think he was one of the few players that actually got a shot on goal. So like if we're able to like let's say uh position him better or like have a more solid back line per se, like we could actually use him as a piece in attack. Like, I guess that that's what we were looking for in terms of, like, replacing Callens in terms of, like, his style of play. So I think in that area, like, we might have him covered with Kufra. But, of course, you know, we need um more coverage. And <laughs> sorry about the background. <laughs> yeah, and uh, who else? Um, Barasa, we, we got to talk about him. Um, I think he was probably one of the best players on the field. Mainly because, you know, we spoke about it last week, you know, having someone at goal that actually gives you confidence. He did have like a one-on-one -on -one chance that he saved pretty well. And, you know, he was able to cut some crosses and, you know, very good anticipation in terms of, um, you know, uh, anticipating the attack. But f far from it, like the rest of the team was like great. And, you know, and then Ch in the in the defense, at least in terms of like le leadership, I think he was well. Yeah, so I mean, when you're looking at this team moving forward, obviously there's a lot of things we need to correct. Obviously there's a lot of things that they need to improve upon. It's just going to take time. We feel, yeah. and the vibes kind of feel like it's rebuilding, right? The vibes around the team feel like we're trying to pick up the pieces. We're trying to fill the shoes of Maxi Morales and, you know, Tatis. And, you know, you look at all these players that leave and you can't replace these guys overnight. You know, you, you need time yeah. to fill the shoes of those and that's that's a problem right yeah i think that's a general message i think the fan base as well i don't know if you've seen a lot of you know i mean i i know where they're coming from i know that they want to see the team at least try to be like consistent or at least like show signs that you know yeah it might be a loss but like there is an idea as to what we want to play for but like as you said like this team needs time everything that like Anything good takes time to actually, like, solidify. So, like, you know, if you don't give them enough time, like, you can't really go, like, and condemn or, like, judge a performance or, like, how the team is going to look throughout the season just because you see, like, one bad performance from, like, practically every single member of the team. No, like, you need time. You need patience. I Like, like I said in my article as well, this season you're going to need a lot of time and, not, and a lot of patience. Like, we make playoffs – pretty good we don't make him you know you gotta at least see that you know there's an idea that they build up throughout the season and that's what we're looking for yeah i mean look right now playoffs we have a long way to go before we are good enough to be in the playoffs losing all of those big players but let's talk mm -hmm. about some of the, st the some of the statistics that kind of indicate where this team is right now so mm -hmm. looking at Time of possession, right? NYCFC ended mm -hmm. up with 62% of possession, Nashville 38%. Shots on goal, Nashville had nine, um, or rather just shots. Shots on goal, they had four. NYCFC had also mm -hmm. had nine shots, but only two on goal. So the attempts 
were there. They had opportunities. Mm -hmm. A lot of them mm -hmm. just were not on goal. Um, low probability mm -hmm. there. Corner kicks only had three corner kicks compared to eight from Nashville. Um, four mm -hmm. yellow cards. So clearly, NYCFC got frustrated. They were playing aggressive. Maybe the ref was mm -hmm. a little soft, as Juan mentioned before the episode kicked off. Um, yeah, each had two was. saves. It's tough, <laughs> you know. It, it, it's sometimes you're on the on the on the wrong end of those yellow cards. Yeah, I think you know. Um, I think Nashville was well aware that this team was not going to be as solid or or as consistent as you know previous times. I mean, on paper as well, it's not like we're not like perfect on the road and against Nashville. I think we only won once before, like mm -hmm. throughout the seasons, like you know playing against them. So, you know, looking at numbers as well, I think um, they go based on that as well. But um, yeah, I think the ref also, you know, like as you said, kind of was well, not that biased. I mean, that Keaton Parks wasn't was the challenge against Keaton Parks or like, oh yeah, I think it was against him that he didn't book the Nashville player when it was clearly a, a yellow card. But then he goes and like right after like books um, Brian Kufer because of a, a bit softer kind of challenge and you know. That I think also like didn't really help. Yeah, no, it certainly didn't. But you know, looking at some of the guys that we had some questions about, Barraza and Goal, mm -hmm. obviously one that we were like m m unsure. You know, obviously a freeze on the back end there. They give Barraza the start. He actually played decently well. Had that really nice one on one <laughs> save um, in the first half. Yeah. So he had some moments where I was optimistic. I'm thinking Barraza. It, you know, elevated his game. You love to see that. Chano played yeah. well um, at times. Yeah. And Kufre probably was their best defender. You know, that he, he had some opportunities. He had a nice shot on goal. Obviously, it went right to Willis, and um, he didn't let it go. But, you know, looking at the mm -hmm. offense is where we need to really focus in and say, okay, what do they need to do better? Talos Magno had some decent opportunities. Obviously, long-range shots are not preferable. We we prefer to have, you, have them within the 18-yard box. He had some good opportunities outside of them, but... Um, we mm -hmm. need better passing, right? He was kind of playing up top, but we need just more fluid passing and to keep our heads up. Because a lot of times if, I feel like okay. our guys are getting the ball and they're just trying to take everyone yeah. on 1v1. They're just trying to do it on their own. And you, yeah. you, you got to use each other to supplement yeah. that. You got to use each other to pass around and make some moves and, and make good runs. And you just didn't see a lot of that. Yeah, did you see how, I mean, when uh, Talis Magno, you know, did take on two and three, he was able to like isolate uh, GP, Garo Pereira. But, like, you know, when he had the chance to actually, like, give him the ball and, like, for him to create a space or create a chance, he kept on trying to, like, take on more defenders and, like, creating the shot, which is something that I think he should improve on. I know it's only the first game, but, like, if you see that you have an open player, like, I know that it's easier said than done because we're watching it from, like, you know, home. But, like, you know, I'm pretty sure that... You know, you train those type of chances and you know, as a player, you know when to pass the ball or, or you know how your teammate is going to move. So, like, I think that if he keeps doing that moving forward, like, I think, okay, he's not going to be like that number nine or he's going to take time to settle in that role. But, you know, like, pass the ball, <laughs> pass the ball. And, like, you know, we need, we, need to, we need to score and... I don't know. Do you think that NYCFC should go for a number nine and keep uh, Ta uh, Talis Magno on the win? So, you know, I, I kind of feel like a number nine would be good because Talis Magno is not a, is not a striker. It's, it's not a nine. He's not a, he's not not a, a striker. Yeah. That's not his game. Mm -hmm. It is clear as day. Mm -hmm. If they're utilizing him as a striker, it's because we don't have a better option and they want their best attacker forward. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is... Mm -hmm. Magno, like you said, he's very good at isolating other players because he draws so many defenders to him. He's capable of dribbling through two or three guys. The problem is his he gets that mentality that when he starts to dribble, he doesn't want to stop. And that's where yeah. you see and, and, and for what it's worth, I'm gonna take it to a whole nother level. Look at guys like Neymar when they when they came when he went from Santos to Barcelona. That was his biggest mm -hmm. problem. I mean, his biggest problem was that he would try to dribble the whole team and he wouldn't pass the ball off. Once he realized exactly. that mm -hmm. You know, playing that tiki taka, playing those those passes out. You know, you can dribble one or two guys, but you then get rid of the ball and, and make a move and get your, get into space yeah. and present an opportunity uh, to get the ball back. Magno oftentimes can dribble through two or three guys, but he doesn't pass that off, and then he gets the ball taken away. There has to be a balance there, and he has to learn how to get rid of the ball, get into space, get in yeah. behind, whatever it might be, and then he will have better opportunities to score that aren't beyond the eighteen yard box. 
exactly. I think that's what happened yesterday too. It's just that you know he goes dribbles one two, you know, and then the rest of the team like goes behind him. But like the moment that he loses the ball, like the team is not positioned well to actually uh, run back and defense. So like I think um, that also like affected NYCFC yesterday in terms of like goal creation as well. Uh, did you see um, um, Pellegrini on the midfield? I know you were like. You know, I know it's the first game, but how did you see him like uh, perform during his first game? You know, in that position, I I know we spoke about that last week. So Pellegrini, they had him listed as a winger, and I always thought he'd be better as a cam. Mm-hmm. They've actually put him in that cam role, mm-hmm. um, and he was getting mm-hmm. into some space. Like I liked how he was in the right spots. The problem was the execution. Once mm-hmm. he had the ball, was poor. His vision was poor. Um, but he looked uncomfortable. Like, I don't know if you noticed that too, but every time he had the ball, yeah. he just didn't look like yeah. he knew what he was going to do with it. And I think that was a lack yeah. of chemistry and a lack of playing time with the guys around him. He just doesn't understand their game yet. Right. But do you think he was, was he in that attacking uh, midfield position or do you think he was like on the right or on the left most of the time? That's the thing. Cause I feel like most of the game, I feel like he wasn't that attacking midfielder, so he wasn't that near the the strikers. Right. But, like, yeah, like, he tried to find them, but, like, I feel like everyone was, like, so disconnected and so distant that by the time that he tried to find the loopholes, like, everyone was, like, uh, separated from each other. So, like, I don't know if... Was he as an attacking midfielder most of the game? Because if that's the role, he should be, like... In the middle. Near the strikers. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he was... Near the he was um, they had him on CFC playing a 4-2-3-1. So he was supposed to be mm-hmm. playing the cam role with Andrade at left wing mm-hmm. and Pereira at right wing, and then Magno mm-hmm. up top. And that was... that mm-hmm. was At least that's what they have the, you know, the formation as on ESPN. The formation, so, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. the reality is, is that... Pellegrini is is good. I think he has potential, but you need someone who's actually going to be contributing on a consistent basis and not mm-hmm. going to disappear or need this much time. That is where like we hope right. Santi ends up coming back and he can help supplement that role yeah. because his service and his flair will open up things for Magno. So, you know, I, I just I, I kind of feel as though Andrade should be at striker. He should be the nine and Magno should be yeah, playing should be um, on the left wing. I feel like that's the more like natural sequence. I just don't really get why Cushing had Magno playing the nine because that just doesn't fit his role very much. It doesn't fit his role, yeah. But like also to speak about uh, um, Teo Andrade a little bit, he did have that chance and he didn't take the shot. <laughs> he tried to like, you know, pass the ball back and, you know, it's just so difficult, but like going back to the Santi point, I, I do think we need him back. I did hear in the pre-match uh, talk, uh, I don't know if you know about this guy, Roberto Abramowitz. He does the NYCFC radio sp- uh, Spanish commentary. He mentioned that the team is not like really looking to stop bringing in players. So like he's going to have like at least two or three more. And I hope. You know, that's the case, uh, given that, you know, aside bringing in Santi and um, I forgot the other name. <sighs> Ledesma? From PSB. The, eh, there you go. I'm sorry mm-hmm. about that. Yeah, Ledesma. So, you know, aside those two, maybe two more and a striker, would you want, like, uh, would you want the team to go for, like, a natural striker? Um, yeah, I mean, of course. Or are you <laughs> or are you willing to wait for, like, a nine? Uh, for uh, Are you willing to wait for Talis Magno to break into that nine position? I don't think the fan base will no, wait. No, I mean, look, that's, <laughs> but, not, his, that's yeah. not his game. Like, he's not a striker. Like, his game is not that of a striker at all. If you look at mm-hmm. good strikers mm-hmm. around the league, I mean, you look at guys like, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I mean it, it's tough. I, I watch a lot of Premier League, so I know a lot of names like that. Um, yeah, you know, you, you can. The only that. guy that Go I can ahead. see Magno replicating. If I was Magno, you want to know who I would be trying to mimic? Gabriel Jesus. Who? That is the type of player oh. I think he could be like. You know, got some good flair. Yeah, Obviously, yeah, both Brazilian, so they both have that flair. They're mm-hmm. not like burners. Gabriel Jesus is not a fast guy, but he's very technical and yeah. he's a good finisher. But he passes yeah. the ball off and he's very yeah. smart with his decision making. So that is where mm-hmm. I could see him filling a role similar to Gabriel Jesus. The problem is Magno plays mm-hmm. like a left winger. He plays like he's dribbling through everybody. He plays with that aggressive mm-hmm. mentality, and that's not what strikers are supposed to do unless you're Cristiano Ronaldo in your prime, and that's not that's not anybody. That's not him. Yeah. 
it's not him. Exactly. I think we've discovered that for the last two yep. seasons that among the fan base. You can see other podcasts as well that they're not with the idea that Talis Magno should be used as mm-hmm. a nine because that's not his position. But, you know, hopefully, you know, we bring in reinforcements that, like, actually, like, help him uh, contribute the way, like, he knows how to. Because I think we're losing a spot and we're losing a True. player if we don't use him in the right position. I think that's in general, like, in the game, you know. Like, if you don't, if you play someone out of his position, you're not going to get the best out of right. him. Right. The problem is a lot of, like, the big names and stuff that, you know, you look at Higuain retired after this season. He's a true nine. He's a true striker. He's you a true look at, though, mm-hmm. the, you, you said, you, you mentioned something about money. Like, the NYCFC, not NYCFC not really wanted to spend a ton of money. The problem is, is that you mm-hmm. go over and look at, like, China or Saudi Arabia, and they're handing out mm-hmm. cash Tons of it to these veteran players, yeah. and, and the NYCFC is not going to match right. that. So they're trying to bargain bin some guys, and it's not working. But like, I think in that aspect, I think it's because due to the league's totally. like salary Absolutely. cap. So like, you know that. I mean, once that's gone, I think a- any team is going to be able to like, you know what, bring Messi. <laughs> <laughs> Miami almost said it. I think I think that's what Inter Miami. Yeah, I think that's what Inter Miami is kind of like yeah. waiting for. The salary cap to be gone and then you know bringing Messi and but that that's you know down, down the line <laughs> totally not and, and, and for what it's worth I hope to God that Messi does not come to the MLS yet because he is still playing at the top of his game he he needs to be playing with the best teams in the world because we need to enjoy the beautiful the beautiful game he brings the beautiful style he brings for a couple more years before he you know comes to MLS and really helps us uh, build things up <laughs> No, no, I mean, trust me, in my book, he deserves to go back to Barcelona. I love, I love that's that. That's his home. That, that's Him and Lewandowski? Like, as much as I want to see him, yeah. As much as I want to see him playing live, mm-hmm. like, my my perfect ending to his story is, you know, coming back to Barcelona. He's going to do that. that. That's that's the perfect way to end yeah. his career. As much as I want to see him. In I know. Lives, no, I agree. I mean, me. look. Him going back to Barca, which I think is 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 possible, very possible. They're talking about it. It's very. If he possible. does it, yeah, they're talking him, about him. Lewandowski, Gavi, Pedri, Ansu Fati. You look at some of the players that they have. It'll mm, be Ansu Fati might not uh, be there. So he might so not be there for so long. We saw Pedri, and you saw Gavi, and you still have Lewandowski. Oh, no. and Gavi and Pedri. I mean, <laughs> you got they're the young Iniesta and Xavi. You know, that's these are the guys. They're the, they're the next the next generation of of superb midfielders. The next generation. And then you put Messi in that of with Lewandowski, course. one of the best strikers on the planet. Like you know, like it reminds me yeah. of prime Suarez when the guy would just convert everything. You know, I would oh. love to see Messi and Lewandowski yeah, together. Hopefully, we'll see though. But like yeah, going back to the NYCFC, a little different. <laughs> we 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 talk <laughs> Barcelona for a little bit. <laughs> uh, Chicago Fire is the next uh, opponent. They didn't play this weekend, so their season starts against NYCFC. Like, so there's not really much material to actually like kind of like study the rival per se. So what do you think NYCFC should do, given that you know they won't see much or like the real thing from Chicago Fire until like Saturday. I think that they should change their formation. <laughs> Is what I think they should do. I, I think that they should change their formation to a four-three-three. I think they should be playing uh, four, four three, three. Okay. you know, four defenders, you know, like traditional left back, right back, you know, two center backs. I think they should have three mm-hmm. midfielders. But instead of having just three straight across, I think you have two center mids, then you have one center attacking mid, which could be um, Pellegrini. But then you have mm-hmm. Thiago Andrade playing striker. You have Pereira at right wing and Talos Magno at left wing. That's what I would do personally. It allows you to get a little bit more offensive mm-hmm. and put the pressure on them. Like we had yeah. a lot of possession, but it was meaningless possession because. Because the entire first half, Nashville was in our side of the uh, on our side of the field. So you know that's mm-hmm. it doesn't matter how much possession you have if the possession is meaningless and you're just passing it around the back. Mm-hmm. We need to have more of an offensive mindset. It, it, it felt to me that it was a lot very discombobulated. Players didn't really they looked uncomfortable because they were out of position. Look, you can have Hawk and you can have Parks playing your center mids. You know maybe have them one of those two stay back and play a more defensive role. But you need to be you know feeding the ball up to your wings because Magno was great. Like hugging the hugging the sideline, I like him more hugging the sideline, utilizing that space, and that way you know you can have your center attacking mid kind of flow into that space and help him and kind of play off each other. Question is, is your cam, mm-hmm. which would theoretically be uh, Matthias Pellegrini, is he going to be able to hold his own? That's why we need Santi because Santi at, at cam may be very nice to have uh, alongside you know Talis Magno at left wing. That's the thing, though. With Santi, I think, you know, we're saving a lot of mm-hmm. time and we're giving uh, 
a Pellegrini, a, a way to actually learn and actually like from Santi that way, you know, let's say he gets injured or something or like, you know, we alternate between him and Santi, he's able to learn from outside and like, you know, <clears throat> given that he comes back, he needs time to actually learn. And I think we're rushing uh, Pellegrini right now because we need that like creator. So I think given Santi coming back, um, we save a lot of time and we like we actually win an attacking player mm -hmm. as well because Santi already knows how uh, the attacking exactly. third play. So you know, knowing your movement and knowing how your atta attacking players play, you know, help a lot into like creating chances. So yeah, hopefully. I mean that's what we hope. But guys. You know, let us know what you think in the comment mm -hmm. section. Obviously, not the result that we wanted. Right. Score, Score predictions. predictions. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, for, ne for next week. Um, obviously, this team has a long way to go, but I, I prefer they change mm -hmm. the formation, have a little bit more of an offensive game. Mm -hmm. Players look like they were out of position. We're not comfortable. Mm -hmm. I prefer if they kind of, like, if right. you're going to change something, do it now before you're heading in the wrong mm -hmm. direction for too long, and then you have to change things down the road, and you're like, ah, you know, we could have done this earlier. I personally did not like the formation. I thought it was it did not have the offensive makeup that we need, and I think that being more aggressive in the mm -hmm. uh, with our possession, you know, runs, making runs um, that are aggressive, uh, it felt like the build-up play was so slow, and it felt like we would just get it up the field, and we'd lose possession of it, and then they would just counter, and then they would hang out in our zone and just get corner kicks, corner kicks, and obviously Walker Zimmerman gets a goal on one of those. So, you know, you kind of have right. to be a little bit more aggressive. You, If your defense is a, is a vulnerability, if your goalkeeper is still up in, in, in kind of a question, you have to keep the ball on the other side of the field. You know, you have to keep them on their toes. You have to keep right. their defense, push their back line back so they cannot push up to that half field point and try to get those runs on, um, you know, behind. Obviously, Mukhtar had some really nice opportunities and, and obviously passed it off for an easy goal because our defense just crumbled in the in the most, uh, you know, the pinnacle, that catalyst, the apex moment. Um, so it is what it is, right. guys. But and I'll let you give your last thoughts here before we wrap up. Well, yeah, like you said, you know, hopefully, you know, he the coach finds a formation. You know, I hope that the player's morale is not as slow as we think it is but you know it's just the first game i think again i think i'll say this throughout the whole season but this team needs time and patience to actually find their a rhythm and you know i think we should be on the team's back uh regardless of the result i think the players are there yeah we might be needing some pieces like to actually improve a little faster but you know i think as much as they're going to kill me on social media, but I think we're on the right track. <laughs> and I predict hopefully a win uh, or a tie. I want to see some improvement next week, so we'll see what happens. But yeah. I definitely think we want to see a win next week. That would at least give us some optimism moving forward. But guys, I'd love to hear perspectives as always. Mm -hmm. In the YouTube comment section, make sure to like and subscribe as always on the new NYCFC Fireside podcast. Much love as always. We'll catch you guys on the next one.